When you read the descriptions of jhana, rapture and pleasure, born of seclusion, accompanied with directed thought and evaluation. And you learn of how the rapture and pleasure suffuse the body. There's no part of the body that's not suffused by pleasure and rapture. You sometimes wonder, whose body is this? Whose mind? Doesn't sound like your body, doesn't sound like your mind. But the Buddha is basically saying it is potential in your body. Your body as you feel it right here, your breath as you feel it right here, and your mind as you're engaged in being aware of the present moment and commenting on it. Same body, same mind. It's just that you learn how to explore the potentials of what you've got right here, right now. I had that problem when I was first meditating. I do the descriptions of what other people were experiencing, and it seemed so far away from what I was experiencing. So I tended to overlook what I was experiencing and was looking for something else. And that's a mistake. You've got to look right at what you got right here, right now. This breath, this body. How could you experience it in a way that would be pleasant? Start with just pleasure. Part of a pleasure would consist of changing the way you breathe. You can change the rhythm. But a lot of it also has to do with your attitude, being receptive to how the breath feels. We go around and carry a lot of tension in the body. And when there's a lot of tension, we don't want to go into those tense parts. We tend to stay out and they get closed off. You've got to think of things opening up, down through the torso, down the back. But in the beginning, especially the front of the torso, because that's one of the more sensitive parts of the body, and that's where the pleasure and the rapture are going to be felt, especially in the beginning. That's where they'll be most, most prominent. So if there's any tension or tightness there, think of it dissolving, and you're opening up to it, the sensations that remain. As for the directed thought and evaluation, I've commented before how some people will ask, well, how do you start doing directed thought and evaluation? And the answer is you're already doing it. You've been doing it ever since you started learning how to speak. When you speak to yourself before you break into speech, that's directed thought and evaluation. You choose a topic and you comment on it. And here we're commenting on bringing three things together. The breath, a feeling of pleasure, and your awareness. You want them to stick with one another. Because that's another quality that will help the breath get more comfortable, as you consistently watch it. Because it so happens if the, you're with the breath for a while, and then you're aware of something else, and you come back. In that area when you're away from the breath, things could have tensed up again. But if you're consistently there, opening, 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 any patterns of tension. The consistency of your awareness is going to create a sense of ease in the breath. And then it's a matter of holding in mind the perception that it can spread. You can either think of it spreading the way a warm sensation would spread, say, in radiant heat, simply radiating through the body. Or you can think of it as running along different channels in the body. The main channel, of course, is the spine. But there are other channels running around the torso, through the torso, running through the head, down the arms, down the legs. And 
their, your arms, your legs. But these things do have these potentials. So ask yourself, where is the potential for pleasure here? Where is the potential for the mind to come in in a way that's really helpful in bringing the breath and the feeling of pleasure and the awareness all together? So that all three seem to fill the body. The director of thought and evaluation here basically adjusting things. So they come together just right. When they're just right, you, you don't have to talk so much about it. It's natural when you've been working on a job and the job is completed. You finally got things put together in the right way. You don't have to comment so much on it anymore. If you want to stay here, of course, you have to maintain the perception of breath. But that's much more calm than having to talk about it. And this is where you really get into concentration. In the first chapter, the, the passages talk about your pleasure and rapture born of seclusion. Simply the fact that you are not engaged in unskillful qualities. The mind is beginning to settle down. It's not disturbed. In the second jhana, and starting from here on up, the pleasure and rapture born of concentration. There's a sense of the mind and the breath becoming one. And there's a real steadiness to your awareness. All the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out Not changing at all from in-breath and out-breath. Since in this way you get the mind to settle down. You're not going anyplace else. You're taking what you've already got and realizing if there's going to be any jhana, any concentration, anything good coming out of this meditation. You've got to take what you've got and explore what potentials it may have. That way things begin to come together. And it's not some esoteric body from someplace else or esoteric mind stay from someplace else. It's simply your body, your mind, put together but very continually. And you've developed a sense of what feels just right. And as you maintain it, then the sense of pleasure and the rapture will grow. Sometimes the rapture will be very mild. That's usually a measure not so much of how strong your concentration is, but just simply how much you needed the, the rapture. When your energy is depleted, the body will sometimes have a very intense reaction when the rapture comes on. Like someone who's been walking across the desert gets a first glass of water. Every little cell in the body celebrates. But if you've been drinking water all along, same glass of water, but the reaction is different. You haven't been quite so starved for the water. In the same way, when you're not starved for energy, the sense of rapture is, can be very mild, which is why the word piti that we translate as rapture can also be rendered as refreshment. You feel refreshed sitting here. And the mind doesn't feel like it's leaning in any direction, forward or back. It's just content to be right here. You maintain that, and that's how the mind gets into deeper stages of concentration. Again, you're working with what you got. You're not dropping this level of concentration, say, so I've got to find a new level of concentration. What you've got will develop. So when the Buddha talks about concentration, it's not someplace else. It's not some other body. It's not some other mind. It's this body and this mind. Simply that you paid a lot of attention to bringing them together just right. This is a principle for all the factors of the path. You're taking what you've got here. 
and turning it into a path that goes someplace noble. Otherwise, the same body, the same mind can be a path to maybe a heavenly realm, human rebirth, or lower rebirths. Those potentials are here as well. But you've got the choice. You can make this into a noble path. So pay a lot of attention to what you've got right here, and try to be as sensitive as possible to the potentials that are right here. In fact, the more care you place in being sensitive, the more things will begin to open up inside. And as the body opens up, that's when the pleasure and the rapture can come. And your direct thought and evaluation really does get fascinated with how you can get this sense of well-being to spread around the body. So you're converting your tools, the tools and the, the aggregates that you used to find different kinds of pleasures outside before. Now you're turning to this purpose. Same tools, but new results. <laughs>